Big Blend Radio, and we're very excited. Today we are in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Nancy and I traveling on our Love Your Parks tour. And, of course, if there's a park, we're going to it. And today, this morning, our first park was Petroglyph National Monument, and we're excited to have Nancy Hendricks join us. Nancy is uh, the superintendent of the park. So welcome to the show, Nancy. How are you? Thank you so much. I am so happy to be able to talk to you today. This is an amazing chance to talk about all the cool things that we have out at Petroglyph National Monument. This is awesome. So I do have to ask you, now, you are the newest (laughs) superintendent, right? How long have you been in this area? Because I always like to hear from people that have just got to an area to see if they have the same excitement we do about a region. (laughs) I arrived here in October of 2019 and have been really busy ever since exploring Albuquerque and the whole New Mexico, uh, state of New Mexico is just amazing. There's 15 different National Park Service units in New Mexico, Mm -hmm. and I'm up to 11 that I've been to, so I only have four left, and it's very exciting Ah. to travel around and, and see all the amazing, incredible resources here in New Mexico. That's oh, so cool. that is awesome. So you okay. love it like we do. We're jealous. <laughs> I know. Well, I think yeah. I, I don't, we haven't counted. We have to, yeah, we'll have to count. But, you know, going to, uh, you know, the National Monument, Petroglyph National Monument, and we've been to some Petroglyph sites, and today's brought us back to our time in Arizona between uh, mm-hmm. Tucson or Gila Bend. It's right outside Gila Bend, Tucson, and Yuma. Um, it's the uh, Painted Rock Petroglyph site. And I, I always thought it was lava rock, but today I thought, oh, no, I'm wrong. But it was the Hohokam um, with their petroglyphs, and it's a very special place. And I don't care if I'm in a rush to get somewhere, I will go and stop there. I just feel like a connection to that place. And I felt that way today at Petroglyph National Monument. Mm-hmm. Just, just these rocks, these very dark uh, basalt. Uh, am I saying that right? I want to say basalt, basalt. basalt. Um, <laughs> so these rocks, and I mean, this is some. It's spiritual going there. It's very. I I feel something. That just it's always powerful to me to go to places like that. And um, what's interesting is how it's spread out among the community. It's not just one place. You know, you go to a park. It's like here, here's your one spot. But this is spread out throughout Albuquerque in a way. It definitely is, and there's so many places to explore here. And it is a sacred place. It is sacred mm-hmm. to 29 different tribes and pueblos that still occupy the Southwest. Many are our neighbors that are in the local area and live and work in Albuquerque. But we do. We have some spectacular sites out there for our neighbors and visitors to explore. We have short hikes. We have longer hikes. And we even have five dormant volcanoes that actually created the basalt boulders that you see out there. Mm-hmm. where the Puebloan people carved the petroglyphs into. So it's very neat out there. There's a, opportunities for all different kinds of exploration. Mm. So, and we, so the rocks that ahead. are out there that, that we looked at today, the, the people went and just they saw basically a mound of rocks like we were looking at decided, I'm just going to go carve on this one. I mean, because we're used to sort of seeing like cave paintings where the people lived inside the cave, and so they depicted their daily lives on the cave wall. But this is kind of different, where the rocks are all outside of a cave in a big mound. I mean, is is it has it always been like that, or did these rocks tumble down from somewhere? What happened is about 100,000 years ago, there were five volcanoes that you'll see on the West Mesa, And you can see them from all across the city of Albuquerque. They're very distinct on the landscape. And those volcanoes erupted, and they formed the mesa. And the dark basalt boulders that you see tumbled Mm -hmm. down from the volcanoes. And so that is what the Hmm. Native people used to carve with. And Mm -hmm. they, we're not sure what all of the carvings mean, yeah, We know that many of them are recognizable as animals, and you can see people. There's also more recent carvings that were done by the Spanish people when they came into the area. But we oh, estimate we okay. have about 24,000 petroglyphs created by the ancestors of today's Pueblo people. That's a lot of petroglyphs. And you can see them in the, in the Boca Negra Canyon area very easily. Mm-hmm. They're very accessible there. 
Or if you want to go on a longer hike, you can go out to Rinconada Canyon, which is about a two-mile loop trail. And there's mm-hmm. about 300 petroglyphs that you can view wow. from the trail. Or one That's of my crazy. favorite places is Piedras Mercados. And you're right, it's right in a neighborhood. And a lot mm-hmm. of our community members are supporters of us and volunteers for us. And Piedras Mercados, there's about 400 petroglyphs out there. And it's just wow. amazing what you can see out there, um, handprints, different shapes, mm-hmm. faces, animals. Yeah, faces. It's, it's, I just yeah. feel when I go out there that it is a sacred place, and I, and I respect the area. I really encourage mm-hmm. everyone to come out and visit, stay on our trails, and really look at the petroglyphs and, and think about what was here before. I think it's just mm. a really profound experience. The other thing, Lisa and I were like, there's spacemen. See, check that drawing out right there. It shows space. Some of them do. They do look like spacemen. (laughs) (laughs) I've heard other people say that, too. Yeah. What was going on back then? I don't know. Yeah, I know. (laughs) So, I know. it's, It's interesting to me, you know, when you start looking at it. But, again, you know, I think... It, one part, one of the one of the um, signs we're talking about, like maybe the people didn't really, they they consider them sacred, so they don't want everyone to know everything. You know, it's kind of that um, some things mm-hmm. are obvious, like a snake, and some parts yes. are probably like a language that only the people will. And we all, there's a lot of also we also think, oh, it's automatically Anasazi, but it's not. That these are the Puebloans, right, who are doing it. Then you said Spaniards afterwards. And then we've got they people are the- that decided nowadays to do stuff, and you shouldn't do that. Don't do that. Don't touch it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Leave, right, leave them alone. Right. That is the challenge of being so close to the city that um, mm. the, the city of Albuquerque has, you know, the effects on the monument, too. So we, we just encourage everyone who comes here to visit, considering the sacred nature of the area and to really mm. respect, respect yeah. the resources that are out there. Mm-hmm. Mm. I want to give the website out too, nps.gov forward slash p-e-t-r. And from our, you know, Nancy, from our um, travels, um, you know, we travel and document every park we can across the country. And it all started with national parks, national park units, NPS units. And mm-hmm. things happen, you know, from wildfires in the sequoias to COVID, you know, affecting the entire country. It could be mudslides. It could be all kinds of issues or maybe just maintenance. Mm-hmm. Um, we always encourage, please go to the website or even call before you go. Um, just check things out because things can change. We're talking about natural and historic places. Um, so always go to the website, nps.gov forward slash P-E-T-R. Um, I think what you've got is so, it's so special um, and mm-hmm. you're saying that the community is part of this, which I think is another huge thing. And the city is part of that, which is it's kind of a unique situation, isn't it? Having a city be part of the park. It is. We're actually co-managed by the city of Albuquerque Open Space Division. And then, you know, the city is in really close to us. We are they are our neighbors. We are their neighbors. And we have a lot of secondary access points out there just for the neighborhoods so they're able to access the trails and come in and take walks, walk their dogs, get some exercise, run the trails. So we're really fortunate that we're so connected with the city. Mm. That's cool. The last thing, too, I wanted to touch on is when we were out there today, we saw um, different plants come up. So there's, Mm -hmm. this is, you know, you've got the petroglyphs, but it's also important to learn the natural landscape. Um, a lot of, I mean, you're talking native plants, and we're seeing things come to life. You know, springs in the zone here now. Um, but we could see, like, I think it was amaranth coming up. I don't know. I could be wrong. <laughs> That's just me going. I don't know. You know, we're not so familiar with all the New Mexico plants, but you have a lot of signage. And I think what's kind of neat about the way you know it's set up is it's very interpretive. So people are starting to learn about the plants because Mm -hmm. the people that put the petroglyphs there survived with these plants, right? Yes. And what you probably saw was dock, wild rhubarb, one of the plants that that comes out in the season, and it'll go across the landscape and it blooms a very beautiful flower. We have up on the mesa top, we get some amazing wildflower blooms. 
And, of course, mm. I don't know all the wildflowers, but there are some great folks that work at the visitor center that can help you learn about the wildflowers and plants that are out there. And I encourage folks to go down and visit the park rangers down there. And there's mm-hmm. a great bookstore down there where they can, they can look through the books and, and look up plants. And there's also a really good National Park Service app that we have brand new that's out mm. there that we'll be putting information on as soon as we can. And, and the iNature I app is out there, too, that people can look up wildflowers. And we also have some great habitat for jackrabbits and coyotes. Mm-hmm. There's been sightings of bobcats in the monument and even lizards and, of course, rattlesnakes out there. So people, they're cool. starting to come out. So people need to be aware when they're out there. There might be some rattlesnakes out there. Just be aware. They'll they're as scared of us as we are of them, and they'll mm-hmm. they'll slither away. So, but it mm-hmm. is a great natural resource and geologic resource with the five volcanoes. Um, mm-hmm. There's That's there's a crazy. lot of study that goes on. Yeah, five dormant the, volcanoes. Five so. volcanoes. Wow. I know. Because mm-hmm. even Think about we were that. standing, we were like looking how it circles around. Like yeah. you can kind of, you almost felt like we were in the like a caldera in a way. You know, mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. okay. We're, yeah, like what happened? What happened under my feet right now? You know, and who walked here? You know, too. Yeah, you, you know, it's, it's really yeah, cool. It's, do you do you get Gila monsters out here? No, we don't have any Gila monsters out in in the desert here in New Mexico. Hmm. Okay, we've been trying to see one in the wild, and it just doesn't happen. I mean, no. we've seen them in the a zoo once in a while, and they're just really weird weird they're cool but they're cool i would love to see, i know i know you're not supposed to play with them or anything of course because no they, they hurt they, they they can they, hurt they you. have a venom actually have yes. a venom and they'll they'll bite you and not let go yes. uh, i lived in the desert in arizona and we had them yeah. in the desert there. we have did um, you see them there one, one in the my, wild i only saw one and it was a roadkill oh. hilo monster so that was unfortunate but what we have here are horned oh. lizards people know them as horny toads yeah, and those oh. are some really, really cool lizards. I love the horny toads. They're yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah, and they're you can find them up on the mesa top. If you you have to look really closely because they are they, they blend. blend in so well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Wow. wow. So is it true that they they can squirt something from their horns at the back of their head? Is that true? It's actually out of their eyes that they squirt. Out of eyes. It's to scare potential predators. Yes. So that uh-huh. is one of their defensive mechanisms. I actually went to the Albuquerque Zoo over the weekend and learned all about different animals, huh. and uh, including they had horned lizards down there. So that was really oh. neat. Oh, wow. I like that. And we saw some cool lizards today, and I'm like, hey, listen, mm-hmm. stop and let me Baby. take your photo. And they're like, heck no, we're out of here. There's a you're, whole you're in my path. <laughs> Yeah, no, and and you did have signs everywhere about rattlesnakes too. And we were just came out of Taos, New Mexico, and we saw a bighorn sheep right outside a bighorn sheep sign. Oh, and I'm so like, looking at the mm. rattlesnake sign and saying, "Well, come on now, where are you?" <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much, Nancy, for joining us. I know it's short notice. We really appreciate your time, and we appreciate uh, all the work uh, MPS does and everyone involved and maintaining our parks and especially here in Albuquerque, the city, the volunteers, the community um, being part of it. So thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you. And I am so glad you were able to visit our wonderful Petroglyph National Monument. Oh, we are too. It was just too short. We'll come back. We're coming back. We want the day hike. So thanks so much. (laughs) Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Everyone, again, mps.gov forward slash uh, P-E-T-R.